I delayed this talk for years only because I was waiting to have the answer for Saki and John about whether mindfulness interventions could slow down cell aging. Um, so please don't hold your breath till the end for an answer. I'm going to show you a work in progress. Um, I come to this from a stress, from the, from the dark side, from a stress perspective, as a stress researcher and a stressed researcher. Um, I wanted to just acknowledge two of my, the young scholars I work with, um, Eli Putterman and Jennifer Dobbin, who first two, who contributed a lot of the data that I'm going to be showing you. So about 10 years ago, I, uh, when I first came to UCSF, really the home of kind of very basic and molecular research, very little on the mind at this medical school, I was interested in finding a marker of biological aging. And I searched far and wide, and the answer was right in front of me at my own university. I found Elizabeth Blackburn, who is a pioneer, as Saki mentioned, in discovering how cells age and the clock or the timer on a cell's life that is uh, the telomere length, which I'll be explaining. Um, but I wanted to start off with a quote from Hans Selye, who is one of the fathers of stress research. He said, every stress leaves an indelible scar, and the organism pays for its survival after a stressful situation by becoming a little bit older. So where is that scar, and how can we measure it? And I like what Saki said this morning is to think of also that we can become younger each day. And I hope by the end I'll leave you with the idea that aging has a lot of elasticity to it, and that our cells are listening to our thoughts and our emotions and responding on a daily basis. So, so what is a telomere? I, when I first embarked on this study to try to understand whether telomeres were related to stress, I thought it was a one-time deal, just to make a point that states of mind could be related to a molecular-based marker. Um, but it turns out the telomeres are very, very interesting, and they're becoming more interesting every day. This is an ex kind of an exploding area of research in both basic and clinical research. So telomeres are the caps at the ends of our chromosomes. They're made of DNA, but they're not genes. They're, they're just repeating DNA sequences that are all wound up and sit on the ends of the chromosomes and protect them. If we didn't have telomeres, our chromosomes would fuse and break. So they're really very important for protecting our genetic material. Now, as cells divide, the telomeres shorten inevitably we don't have the, all the polymerases to fully replicate the telomere at the end of each cell division. But there is this enzyme called telomerase, which actually rebuilds the telomere. It can add back the base pairs to restore our telomeres. So with aging in general, our telomeres are becoming shorter, but there's a lot of flexibility there. If you have a lot of telomerase, you actually can see lengthening, at least in vitro. So telomeres have been thought of as a clock on a cell's life. When a telomere, oop, don't breathe yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your breath. <laughs> um, this is on a clock. I'm sorry, I don't, I, uh, I'm going to be doing a little switching back and forth. Um, when telomeres get to a critical length, the cell goes into cell arrest. It doesn't necessarily die. It becomes in a state of senescence. Now, senescence is not a benign state. A senescent cell can actually do a lot of harm. I'm going to talk about white blood cells, because that's partly where the light under the lamp is. We can collect blood cells easily. But it also turns out to be the aging of our immune cells turn out to be extremely important for our whole body health and longevity. So that as our immune cells become senescent, they start secreting more and more pro-inflammatory cytokines, and we develop systemic inflammation. This, is, this naturally happens a bit with age, and now we know that the short telomeres are partly causing this whole body inf inflammatory state. And inflammation has, has been called inflam aging because it is such a potent promoter of aging of bodily systems. Now you can breathe. So every time you see a telomere, that you can choose to, 
to intentionally notice, return to your breath, and breathe in and out, and think of your telomeres. <laughs> this is uh, one of the pictures of a telomere. So telomeres have been likened to the aglets on the ends of our shoelace. So expensive shoelaces have those little plastic caps at the end that keep them from fraying. So that's what a telomere does for our chromosomes. So telomeres, we know that when they get too short, the cell can become senescent and possibly lead to apoptosis or death. And over the last several years, around five years, the, the question has arisen, well, does telomere length predict the organismal death, human lifespan? So what we know, now know is that short telomeres in our blood is correlated with multiple diseases of aging. This is about as nonspecific of a marker as you can get. This is not a risk factor for heart disease um, or di diabetes or cancer is a risk factor for all of them. All diseases of aging, degenerative diseases, Parkinson's, neurological decline. Um, so you can see here that telomeres are associated and predictive of many types of disease. They also predict lifespan. Um, cancer has been a big question uh, whether telomeres Theoretically, they should promote genomic instability and stochastic events like mutations. So do short telomeres in blood predict cancer? That's been a hard question to nail down, but recently a paper in JAMA came out that showed in a large cohort shorter telomeres in midlife in the blood predict both onset of cancer and progression to death across most types of cancer, particularly the fatal types, um, the more fast-spreading ones like pancreatic and ovarian cancer, and less so for breast and colon cancer. So long telomeres have been related to both increased health span. Health span is probably more important than lifespan. Years of healthy living without disease. Telomeres have also been linked to, to earlier mortality. Short telomeres around a decade later tend to predict earlier mortality. So, you might remember in Obama's first year of office, there was a lot of grumbling at one point about, look, he's turning gray so quickly. And there have been talks about how much stress he was under and whether that was causing his aging. So of course, telomeres came up. And this article in the Washington Post suggests if Obama grows old before his time, it's his stressed out cell tips, this telomere shortening that's causing this. Well, telomere shortening um, may be causing wrinkles and gray hair. Um, because it's causing, you know, more depletion of these cells that turn over. But that, that certainly hasn't been, been shown. But the cosmetic industry is working on that, you can imagine. <laughs> so before, um, around this time, Elizabeth Blackburn, um, as Saki mentioned, won the Nobel Prize for her discovery of this enzyme, telomerase. And before that, there was a lot of demand. People would email and say, so, you know, there's all this literature on telomeres and as a risk factor for disease, so where can I get it measured? And the answer is nowhere, nowhere in the world can you get your telomeres measured. Um, and then there were also researchers lining up saying, well, this might be relevant to this disorder and that, you know, how can we measure telomerase and telomere length? And these are highly specialized measures that there are only a handful of reliable labs around the world. Um, and so it's been a bit of a bottleneck on research and certainly to clinical use. Um, so this year, Elizabeth Blackburn um, and some colleagues, including me, have started a uh, telomere measurement company. So this is my disclosure. And so now this has kind of gotten rid of the bottleneck, we hope. So I'm going to cover today, I'm going to ask the question, is the cell aging system, the tel telomere telomerase maintenance system, is it modifiable? Are we on this inevitable clock, the slow decline, or can, do we have some control over our cell aging? So I'm going to review the studies, what we know about stress and lifestyle, mostly cross-sectional, some interventions, and then end with this question about interventions. There's only a few interventions that have been done, um, one by Cliff Sarin, who's here. So I'll be, I'll be talking about those at the end, but again, don't hold your breath because that's just at the very end.